We have just a few hours before game time between the Royals and Orioles, so let's answer some questions in this edition of Mailbag Friday. You are Locked On Royals, your daily Kansas City Royals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Locked On Royals and the Locked On Podcast Network. As always, I'm your host, Jack Johnson, and you can follow me on Twitter or X at JohnnyJ underscore 15. That's at J-O-H-N-Y-J underscore 15. You also can catch us on wherever you get your podcasts. That can be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, we're on Odyssey, and we're on YouTube. Just be sure to hit that follow button and subscribe. Today's show is brought to you by Prize. Now got NHL and NBA in full swing in the playoffs. Uh, baseball's in full swing as well. The college seasons are over, except for college baseball. But I know the wheelhouse is really in the pro leagues, and and that's where Prize Picks is going to win you a lot of money. So don't waste any more time. Go and start placing some bets on some players. Pick those players, your favorite ones in baseball, favorite ones in NBA, NHL. And again, start winning some big time money as early as this weekend. I know there's a, a pretty fun playoffs, uh, playoff region about to begin on prize picks. I believe that is tomorrow, actually. They had the play in rounds the last couple of days. Uh, so they're going to have everything set up for you. And it should be a lot of fun in winning some money. It's always fun to win some money, but do so over at prize picks. If you're a first time listener, of course, welcome in. We love new listeners here on the podcast. And if you want to know a little bit more about me, I am based here in Kansas City. I work at Sports Radio 810 WHB, do some co-hosting, some hosting, and some producing, so I stay pretty busy in the sports world. But when you come to this podcast, when you click on this link, you know that you are getting 30 straight minutes of Royals baseball. And as I can say over and over and over again, if this is your first episode, it's usually the best one for the week. It's a Mailbag Friday. It shows just how incorporated the listeners and followers are into this podcast. We answer every single question that is thrown our way. We give you a shout out on this episode. So it's a lot of fun. I pretty much let Fridays be dictated by the listeners of the Locked On Royals channel. So let's dive right into it. Question number one uh, comes from Charles. Hopkins is dominant again. Would you consider extending him or would you be concerned about his UCL? I think. UCL injuries, Tommy John surgeries, uh, they can be random or they can be far more targeted toward the pitchers that throw harder. Uh, Cole Reagans is somebody that's already had two Tommy Johns, though it was Tommy John, and then he was working his way back and I just never fully healed and it happened to uh, get hurt again. So I don't see it as two separate Tommy Johns. It was kind of the same thing and then it just never really got fully repaired. Uh, that can always be a concern, but I would say it's a concern for every pitcher out there. Um, I don't know if you look at Cole Reagans and just always live in fear. Uh, and I know two Tommy Johns is always going to scare away people. He could get hurt, knock on wood, but you don't look at a player. I mean, that's anybody in baseball, any player in sport, they could get hurt at any time. So I think you look at that player and go, listen, we value you. We think you're a stud. We think you're a star. We want you to be here long term. And it's been a damn long time since the world's about a pitcher with the talent of Cole Reagans. I would extend him extending him. I'm not watching Cole Reagan's starts. I'm not watching the velocity and going, oh no, his arm could give out at any point. Baseball can have injuries. We've seen this year there's been a lot of injuries that puts people on edge, but I don't think the Royals front office are looking at Cole Reagans and constantly living in fear. If they want him to be here long term, I'd imagine they'd give him that healthy contract. But again, I think what's more important is they want to see him do it for a full year first, right? It's not just about the injury. They want to see if he can be at that successful for an entire year, over 20, 25, 30 starts in this calendar year. So that's what I think they're more so focused on than him getting a third Tommy John surgery. Next question comes from Rod. As long as we avoid a sweep of this series, should we consider that a win? The Orioles are hot. Yeah, the Orioles have won four in a row. They are one of the hottest teams in baseball, have one of the best lineups in baseball. I think bare minimum, you just want to grab one in this series. It's the same thing I said when they were at Oriole Park. Don't get swept, right? Try to find ways to sneak away with two wins in this series. You feel good about the games being at home. Hopefully a big crowd off in stadium. I've said this all week. I'll be out there Saturday and Sunday. I'm urging you guys to go out there and buy some tickets, do so on game time, uh, because this should be a really fun weekend with some great baseball and some great baseball players out there on the diamond. But I am with you here. 
I think that they could probably just grab one rod, and I feel good about that. That would put them at 13-9, and nine, and then the Orioles are done for the regular season. You don't see them again. The only other time you'd see them is in the postseason, and of course that would be step one for the Royals is actually just getting their foot in the door of the playoffs. But if you take one, you go two and four against Baltimore, but there's a lot of teams that are going to struggle a lot uh, with that lineup, and it should be a tough task for the Royals rotation. Next question comes from Mustache. What kind of blinders do Royals fans have on to think Isbo will ever be an MLB player? Been saying for years that he sucks, and every year it's the same thing. He just needs to be an MLB average hitter and to return positive value. Well, guess what? He's a career 73 WRC plus hitter and 44 this year. Awful. I understand there's some anger with Kyle Isbell. Um, I was one of those people saying that the bat just needs to be league average, and I know we've been saying that for a while. I thought second half, um, Kyle Isbell showed that he could maybe be that type of hitter. I thought when he was healthy, you know, he was just the league average. Defense was good enough. And then you're looking at a guy that can be a three-war player. The reality is now, the truth of this is he does the benefit of the doubt right he can't get through the first two months of the season and he's hitting just like this and we'll be able to sit here and say he's a league average bat he's gonna have to show it to us I mean Drew Waters who we'll talk about in the third segment he's hitting the cover off the ball in Omaha he would be the next option for Kansas City in center field but Kyle Isbell is going to have to show he's more than just a well below average bat because what he is right now is a fourth outfielder Being a fourth outfielder is all fine and dandy, but you can't play a fourth outfielder every single day, which is what the Royals are doing right now. Either Isbell has to hit, or he's going to be demoted or moved to the That is just the reality of the situation. He's not going to get the benefit of the doubt much longer than April or maybe May. So that's kind of where I'm at with Cole Reagans. But I understand the frustration, Cole Reagans' mustache. Uh, Next question we got here is from JHB. How much more time for Garcia leading hitting leadoff? Look, I don't think the Royals are going to abandon their lineup 19 games into the season. Uh, You're hoping that Garcia can get back on track, get into a hot stretch here on the homestand. I don't think he's going to be as bad as he was on the road trip hard too, because he was 0 for 23 or whatever that was, or dating back to that final game of the Astros series. He had two hits in the first inning. That was the last time he got a hit. Um, He has been ice cold since then. But the, the thing is for me, who's the other leadoff hitter? Number two would be MJ Melendez for me, and he's 0 for his last 21. So MJ Melendez doesn't really deserve to be the leadoff hitter. And I'm not for putting Bobby Wood Jr., your best hitter, in the leadoff spot. So I don't think that they're going to move him down unless he were to have another 0 for 20 stretch, putting him at like 0 for 45 over the course of 9 or 10 games. So to me, I I do not believe they're moving Michael Garcia down anytime soon. I could always be changed on that opinion, though. And last question here, the first segment, Crypto Chanel asks, what's a realistic bat we could add at the trade deadline? It's so tough this early to look at the trade deadline because we don't really know who's available. Um, I would look at some teams out there like Colorado right now, um, the White Sox being another, although I don't know if the White Sox would trade in division, Washington, um, Oakland as well. You're looking at, you know, maybe the Angels. I never think the Angels are going to be in at the deadline. You can look into some bats to add. Um, if I'm going Oakland and bringing back S. Louise wouldn't be bad, although he's not really much of a above league average bat. He just seems like a Kyle Isbell that's hitting well at this point in time. Um, Brent Rooker would be another one for Oakland. I know the Royals had him as well, but that would be a little bit more pop in your bat. But unfortunately, I just don't have a firm answer right now because just, I don't know. Uh, It's so early in the season, I don't know who's going to be available, and I don't even think the Royals are discussing trade options. First things first, I'd be competitive at the trade deadline. But I do love the question. I'll probably have a better answer next month around this time. Okay, we're going to take our first break of the show. When we come back, plenty more questions again, too, on this edition of Mailbag Friday. That's coming up on Locked on Royals. You are tuning to Locked on Royals on the Locked on Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jack Johnson, and you can follow me on Twitter, X, at JohnnyJ underscore 15. Before we go any further, I want to give a shout out to one of the sponsors today in FanDuel. Now, with FanDuel, uh, we want to let you know that it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL, and baseball is in full swing. And FanDuel is your on every game right now new customers get 150 dollars in bonus bets guaranteed that's 150 bucks win or lose but on everything from slap shots to home runs the slam dunks all on an app 
that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Now, even though basketball, the NCAA tournament has ended, I am getting back into the feel of things. I'm trying to catch fire once again with NBA playoff basketball. One the money there on FanDuel the other night in the play-in games. Lots of fun right now. Uh, it's kind of just like the NCAA tournament to me. I have a better grasp in the pro leagues as well. Uh, so that is always a great way to win some money. But if you aren't as familiar, you just want to familiarize yourself a little bit more, uh, it doesn't hurt to just throw a little bit of money down on just who's going to win the game, maybe the spread, the over-under, or player point totals. Just some easier ones where you can just get a, a little bit of money back. It doesn't always have to be a huge home run pick or an upset pick. It can be a favorable pick and just win you a dollar or two. Uh, but definitely do so over at FanDuel and get started after this podcast episode today. Well, we got about 15 questions to go in about seven or six, seven, well, I'll go six, seven or eight minutes uh, to play with here on the Mailbag Friday. So let's start next with Alex. Do you believe the Royals belong on the same field as the Orioles based on how the Royals have been playing lately? Well, the Royals have been hot. The Royals have played 500 ball. And I, I do believe that they belong on the same field. They just showed a couple weeks ago they belonged on the same field, and that was in uh, Camden Yards. So, yes, I think right now they do belong on the same field as the Orioles. This series is going to tell a lot about how far those teams have come in two weeks. The Royals' offense is slumping, but the rotation has still been really good. You felt like Baltimore stole two from you in that series. You felt like you should have walked away with a sweep, and that always means that you've got that confidence of, we can't wait to play them again. And I'm hoping the Royals take that mentality of they stole two from us. We're going to steal two more from them up here in Kansas City. So to answer your question, Alex, yes, I do believe they belong in the same field. Tom asks, is Daniel Lynch ever coming back? If you are viewing Daniel Lynch as a starter uh, at the big league level, I just I don't think it's ever going to happen again. Uh, if Alec Marsh continues to pitch well, uh, curious what he looks like tonight. It's always tough to pitch really well against an opponent twice in the span of a month, especially a lineup like Baltimore's. But the Royals have no, no indication of moving any of those guys out of the starting five in the rotation. Uh, somebody could always get banged up, and Daniel Lynch has the experience. I just don't see him ever becoming a successful starter. Now, the bullpen, he could turn into what Angel Serp is doing, you know, one inning, you know, be able to ramp it up a little bit. Now, no, I, I just, there's not much of an update on him. He hasn't pitched well in Omaha, and I think the Royals plan to keep him there until things change. Next question comes from Michael. The league has found Garcia's weakness. He just needs to adjust. So more of a question. I do appreciate that insight, Michael. Um, I think that everybody has to learn with pitchers, figuring out your weaknesses and, and learning how to adjust to that. Spencer asks, any update on Chris Bubich? Uh, nothing in terms of his throwing routine or how often he's getting out there on the mound. There's no reason to believe otherwise that, what we were told in in spring training of their tracking to bring him back around June and then probably rehab starts at that point. Uh, but I wouldn't be holding your breath or, or be looking for Chris Bubich as the savior. I mean, if he comes back and he comes back strong, all the better. I think Chris Bubich is a great guy, easy to root for, and I still think has major league stuff. But he's coming off Tommy John, so it's going to be a little bit of a slow play. And right now with the Royals rotation, pitching very well in the bullpen, kind of getting up on the horse. There's no need to, to rush him into anything. I think they can take their time uh, with Chris Bubich. Be happy if we walk out 13 and nine. Yeah, we got asked about just taking one game in the series. I think it depends how you lose the other two games. If you get smoked in your two losses, not going to be too thrilled with a one, one win in this series. Not going to be thrilled with just playing well in one night. If they're all and they're close, just like the Baltimore series uh, on the road. I think I can stomach that a little bit, but I'm not going to complain if four games over 500 uh, with as difficult as the schedule you have coming up is, which, yeah, they won't see a team that right now is above five or below 500, excuse me, until May 13th. So they've got uh, roughly under a month of teams that are either above 500 or playing 500 baseball. Uh, looks like Cole Reagan's mustache has another question here. Do you see Blake Mitchell sticking at catcher and being the replacement for Salvi in three ish years? Or do you think he eventually transitions to a corner outfield spot or even third base? Would he have enough pop in the bat to be a corner outfielder, enough range, and arm for third baseman? He sure has on-base skills. Yeah, that's the great part about his game. Um, he does get on base a lot. He's got a super high walk rate. I would like to see the average and the power really start to show. He had one long home run early in the season in Columbia. That kind of opened my eyes. To me, though, um, 
I think the Royals want to keep him at catcher. Uh, Carter Jensen, I think, has a better chance of moving. He's got tremendous power, but I could see Carter Jensen moving around a little bit. I talked to him in spring training, and he said he'll play wherever the Royals want him to. I'm sure Blake Mitchell thinks the same thing. But to me, though, I think Blake Mitchell was seen as this defensive guru behind the plate that if that bat comes around, you're really looking at a special player. So I think the plan right now is for Blake Mitchell to stay at catcher. Uh, looks like Muniuru asked how many wins – uh, do the Royals need to win the division? I think I placed it at the beginning of the year at like 85 to 88. I think I'm going to stick with that. Still nothing about this start. Even Cleveland having the best record in baseball. Give me reason to think somebody's going to win over 90. Could get to that point. I don't know if the Guardians are going to be able to fare well without Shane Bieber in that rotation. Um, I think the Twins are banged up right now and struggling. That offense just doesn't look too good. And then I look at Detroit. I don't think they have the offense either. Now, the Royals could be looked at and say they don't have the offense. Their rotation is going to come back down to earth. But I think it's going to be neck and neck pretty much all year long. And I think anywhere from 85 to 89 wins does it. Uh, Jeff asks here, it looks like we got about uh, seven or eight questions here. So we really got to hustle. So I apologize for these last couple of questions if I don't give you the longest answer. What would be a good winning record over these 19 games besides going 16 or three or better? What would be considered better than expected? Sorry if questions are a little similar. No problem at all, Jeff. Um, I think over these next 19 games, your goal should be at bare minimum 7-12. and 12. That still keeps you one game over 500. I think best case scenario, you're walking away. You know, something like a 12-7, a and 13-6, and six, that would be really special. And I think get a lot of people to buy into what the Royals are doing. But the tread water, I would even say Bare minimum, worst case, worst case, you want to walk away six and thirteen because that would still keep you at five hundred. You can't have a a four and fifteen stretch that already gets people checking out on you. So that's kind of where I'm at with that, Jeff. Uh, JC Retro Athletics asks, Will Isabel keep the center field job all season? I'm going to say no on that. I think eventually he does move to the fourth outfielder spot, and Drew Waters does get a chance at some point this year. Aiden asks if Michael Massey comes back on Friday, which of course he did. What type of value does he right now? Great defense at second base, and I think the most consistent bat of anybody they put at second base so far this year. That includes Lofton, that includes Hampson, and that includes Fraser. I really hope that he can get out to a hot start because I think that can change everything for Michael Massey and how he plays in 2024. Brian asked, do they give Garcia and or a couple days off? We can't continue to have two automatic outs in the lineup. I think it's a, a rough stretch for both these guys. I'm not overly concerned at this point. They're not going to give those guys days off. Those are two players, I think. Because there's not much depth behind them, uh, just let them play through it. Try to hit their way through it. I, unless they get to an 0 for 45 or 0 for 50 slump, I think you can try to let these guys hit their way out of their slump. Next question comes from Casey Sports Fan. What are the odds Bobby stays hot and ends up being top three in AL MVP contender? I think that he is a top three AL MVP contender. I think he stays hot and he's going to have a very good chance to be the MVP in the American League this year. Uh, I don't see him just completely going ice cold and falling out of the top five. I think it's pretty firm at this point. He'll be top three. Um, Sebo just has a statement here. A lot of questions will be answered after this series. I, I would buy stock into the series, but don't be panicking if it doesn't go the way you expect him to, because Baltimore is arguably the best team in the American League. So if you can compete in this one, maybe to answer some of the questions you have, if they get swept, I'm not going to make excuses, but I'm also not going to go doomsday if Baltimore was well right now just sweeps the Royals Paco Salazar asked why don't the Royals wear all powder blues on the road good question why don't they wear all powder blues in general whether it's home or away I I'm pretty pissed that they don't wear it on the road go old school right feed any base what we all want uh, I love that question there from Taco I would love uh, to see the Royals wear all powder blues on the road why not it looks sharp everybody thinks they look sharp but the Royals only wear them like five times a year and they haven't even worn them yet this year Maybe they do them on Sunday at home uh, for this series. 643 Royals asked two questions here. What is Adam Frazier's role, assuming Michael Massey gets called up? Two, is it time to make a shift in the lineup? If so, what changes are you making? I'll answer the Adam Frazier one here real quickly. Uh, I think he just goes back to depth. Uh, he'll play maybe once or twice a week, if that, depending on how the lineup is looking. So he's going back to what they signed in the B, which was depth. And number two, I do not think it's time to make a, sh a shift in the lineup. Look, the offense is scuffling right now, but there's nobody that I think needs to be moved up or down right now. They're an offense that can be hot and cold at this point in time, boom or bust. I think you take your chances and keep it where it's at. And I got it tonight uh, for game one of this Baltimore series. So we will see how it all goes down and if this offensive cold stretch continues in this next game. Well, thank you to all those that the questions. Sorry for those last couple ones I had to rush through. 
Uh, we definitely are up on time here. So I got to quickly take a break here. When we come back, I'll tell you why Drew Waters was pulled last night. And it was not to come to Kansas City and take Kyle Isbell's spot. That's coming up on Locked on Royals. You are tuning to Locked on Royals and the Locked on Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jack Johnson. You can follow me on Twitter at JohnnyJ underscore 15. Before we move any further, we first want to give a shout out to Locked on Sports Today. It's here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked on, plus our national show streaming everywhere. And you can find that on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And we also want to remind you of our title sponsor in Price Picks. Talked about all the fun things you can bet on, the playing rounds, and the playoffs beginning on Saturday. But spring training is over. Baseball season, of course, is officially underway. So don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your Price Picks entries. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, take your pick of more or less and add them to your Prize Picks entry today. Get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money as well on Prize Picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. Again, those playoffs begin tomorrow, April 20th. So lots of stuff they have over there with Prize Picks. Well, to close out our final episode of the week, uh, we speculated a little bit yesterday in our second segment about Drew Waters. He was pulled at the same time as Mike Pelosi. I might have jumped the gun and said, I, I think that this means either somebody's hurt or Drew Waters is coming to take Kyle Isbell's spot in center field. Though, to me, it felt very cutthroat because the Royals really like Kyle Isbell and abandoning him after a bad road trip, right, and a slow start of the season. It didn't seem like J.J. Bacolo in the front office. I know for some of you out there, you are calling for the head of Kyle Isbell and you want him demoted or you don't want him on the team at all or you just want him on the bench and you want Drew Waters to get the chance. Well. Drew Waters was pulled from Omaha because it was a manager's decision. And he didn't play the next night either. Uh, so that clearly was something having to do with hustle or a lack of effort or something that happened in the dugout. But that's it's not a good look when you're on the cusp of going to Kansas City. And I'm not saying I have all the answers. Um, I have watched a lot of minor league ball before. I have interviewed minor league players before I have interviewed independent. I worked in independent league ball uh, two years ago. The last thing you want to do when you are tearing the cover off the ball or pitching your tail off is to give your manager in AAA and especially that's got as much pull as Mike Jersley does. Mike Jersley was at the big league level for a lot of years in Kansas city. The last thing you want to do is give that manager a reason to go. He's not a good clubhouse guy. He's not going to hustle hard. He's not taking this assignment the way we want him to. Now, listen, Drew Waters probably doesn't deserve to be in AAA Omaha. And I'm sure as a 24, 25-year-old, I mean, he's the exact same age as me, it'd wear on you. It'd be frustrating. You're looking up and going, man, the center fielder up there is barely hitting his weight, and I'm down here tearing it up. Why don't I get my chance? Why don't I get a job out of spring training? There absolutely can be frustrations, and that's a part of baseball. Nobody's perfect in that matter. But for Drew Waters, the last thing I think you wanted to do other than not be healthy or start scuffling is to have a lack of effort problem. And it was not stated. J.J. Bacola just said it was manager's discretion. Uh, that was up to Mike Jersley, and we hope it doesn't happen again. And hopefully, Jersley and Waters or the coaching staff or the teammates all got it ironed out. It's not an issue. We're going to see Drew Waters in no time. But that is why he was pulled. It was not to come up and take Kyle Isbell's job. And if anything, this hurt his chances. Because if you have a guy that's going to be dogging it, well, uh, then that's not somebody maybe you want in the lineup every single day. Because can you count on him if things aren't going well, you're not winning, to be the one to still give 100 and 110%. It's different. I'm assuming it's it's tougher to do that in the minor league, triple A or double A, than to do it at the big leagues, especially if you've been to the big leagues and then you get demoted back down to triple A. Uh, but that is just something I didn't want to see from Drew Waters because he's playing so well right now. And you would like for him to get a shot at one point. But I asked a question of if things start going south for him at the plate, what's the attitude going to be like? Because right now he's playing really well. Whatever, whatever happened a couple nights ago that forced him to get pulled and then be out of the lineup the next day, it wasn't just uh, not running out a ground ball. It had to have been something over the course of, a couple of edits, or maybe mouthing off. Who knows? I don't want to speculate too much because that's not fair to Mike Church. That's not fair to Drew Waters. But that's why he was pulled. 
Uh, I jumped the gun absolutely in trying to pinpoint why he was pulled. Um, and that to me is, you know, a little bit uh, premature on my end. I should have known better that, you know, they aren't going to demote a player an opening day starter 19 games into the season. I just thought it was interesting that at the same time Michael Massey was pulled, Drew Waters was pulled. It's like, oh, maybe they're on the same flight together. Maybe they're on the same shuttle together and they're making their way to Kansas City. But Massey was, Drew Waters was not. So for everybody out there that was awaiting the Drew Waters called up and Kyle Isbell gets demoted tweet that the Royals had put out, uh, you were going to have to wait uh, quite a bit longer, (laughs) I would say, uh, because Drew Waters, A, has to keep hitting, Kyle Isbell, B, has to keep not hitting, and then Drew Waters has to iron out whatever this this attitude thing was or this lack of effort. Who really knows what it was? Uh, But that is the official word from J.J. Bacall. Andy Rogers put that out on Twitter a little bit before the game today, which as I'm recording is about an hour and 20 minutes away. So hopefully I got no hangups and posting this video and you can have a little bit of a pregame mailbag Friday before a fun series tonight. Again, I'll be out there Saturday and Sunday trying to give you guys the best coverage I can. But if you're out there just to enjoy it as a fan, enjoy it, have fun, have fun all homestand long. I'm sure I'll be out there three, four, maybe even five times uh, over the course of this homestand. But that'll do it for another edition of Lockdown Royals and the Lockdown Podcast Network. I have been your host, Jack Johnson. You can always find us on wherever you get your podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and run YouTube. Just be sure to hit that follow button and subscribe. And before we say goodbye for the final time this week, one last shout-out to Lockdown Sports Today. It's here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Lockdown Sports Today now, available on the free Fire TV channels app. Well, we are going to have a full recap of this series on Monday and preview the upcoming one against the Toronto Blue Jays. I'll actually be out at the K three straight days. I'll be out there Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, so I'll stay pretty busy on this homestand. But fingers crossed the Royals can come away with a series win against the red-hot Baltimore Orioles. But until then, you take it easy, Kansas City.